Hey guys, welcome back. Hope you all are doing well. So today in this we are going to discuss about SSRF. Today only I publish an article regarding the SSRF and how we can automate it to find the SSRF among the websites. So let's get started. So guys, this is my article regarding the SSR of methodology and we are going to discuss about how we are going to do it. So the simple step, first of all, is going to be a subdomain enumeration regarding the target, like how there will be a target.com and how many subdomains are there. If you don't know about subdomain, simply like, like, uh, you know about the google.com images.google.com is a subdomain to google.com maps.google.com is a subdomain to the, the google.com so first of all it's a subdomain enumeration there are multiple tools around it but uh, for me for this poc we are going to use the subdominer which is a tool provided by the cyber boy i think uh, let's find subdominer github <coughs> so this is the cyber guy one so this is the tool we are going to use you can uh, download it from the github you just have to go and search for uh, subdominal github that's all so let's get back to our article after finding all of the subdomain we have to find the live domains so how we can find domain after performing the subdominer there will be one file on which all of the domain will be collected and we have to find the live domain so although the subdominer will also find the live domain for you if you go with other tools instead of subdominer you can collect all of the domain into one file and then uh, you can use the httpx to find out the live domains so after finding the live domains what we have to do we have to find all of the urls so what is the difference between the subdomain and url here <coughs> consider the subdomain is google.com but the url will be look like google.com slash path equals to something else slash something else slash some tokens slash something uh, there will be something like that so it's a subdomain you can know as medium.com is a domain and this is the whole url hope you may maybe you are able to see it uh, let me show you somewhere else uh, take an example of uh, www.medium.com okay let me do it like this www.google.com is a url so this is a url url but when i put uh, not a url it's a subdomain so when i put a www.google.com slash some path equals to uh, some random words keywords and some other slash something then other parameter so this is url so you understand the simple domain is known as uh, simple just www.google.com is known as domain but when we assign a path to it it is known as url so let's get clear back to our google chrome So let's get after finding all of the URLs, we can find the URL with the help of cat all live.txt. After finding all of the your live URLs, we have to use the Go Plus. Go Plus is another tool. You can download it by Go Plus GitHub. You can download the uh, Go Plus from here. Here it's you can easily identify the Go Plus and there will be a, some uh, installation link will also be there. So simply with the help of Go, you can install the Go. Go Plus. <coughs> So let's move forward after finding all of the URLs of all of the domains that we collected. Now we have all of the URLs. What we have to do, we check those URLs which have equals to inside them. So what we are going to do, we will get all of the URLs and grab for grab is just for identifying. So we will do the grab for is equals to into the URLs. And then what we are going to do, whatever will be the parameter of equals to, we are going to replace it by this HTTP colon slash slash this this what is this this is the burp collaborator url and we are going to store it into ssrf.txt okay so now ssrf.txt file contain all of the urls in which any url with equals to in between like uh, take an example here uh, okay i deleted it okay now it's here so here is the path equals to is this so we are replacing this with the our burp collaborator URL. 
so after replacing all the parameter with the help of qs replace qs replace is another tool you can download it from the github you are replacing it with this burp collaborator url and storing all of the information is this ssrf.txt so moving forward after finding that all of the links that are present into the ssrf.txt we have to visit those so what we are going to do cat ssrf httpx hyphen fr what is this is for redirecting f stands for follow r stands for redirecting it's right there follow redirect so what it's going to do even if their open redirects are there it will go to that url and that the request will be seen into the burp collaborator and even it's uh, ssrf the server will make a request over there so no big issue so let's consider that uh, this is the ssrf.txt http file so it's going to make a request to all of the urls present into the ssrf.txt so in the ssr.txt on the url parameter we also provided our burp collaborator link so any request made to this link will be shown here so here you can see in the screenshot if the ip belongs to you like you can go and check what's my public ip i can show my public ip my public ip here you can see my public IP is 103211 something but here in the article you see that the, it's, it's not there my IP initials are not there so this means that the request was not made by my laptop or my browser it's some request made by the server so it's a SSRF over there if the request is made by my uh, machine it's a open redirect so both way any request come it either land into the open redirect if it contain your ip if it contain the server ip it contain the ssrf vulnerability so let's go back to the practical so i need to show you some steps that we need to perform for perf uh, getting this ssrf vulnerability so what we need to do uh, i open a blinkit Although Blinkit is not vulnerable to SSRF, so I can easily show you what the uh, how to perform the vulnerability analysis for the SSRF onto the any website. So we are taking the example of Blinkit here. So what we have to do, I just remove everything from here. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, still two folders are there. Remove Y one RF star. Yep. Cool. So everything is nothing is there now. So what we are going to do, we are going to take the help of subdominer to identify the uh, blinkit blinkit.com. So identify all of the subdomains related to blinkit.com. These are just the first step of identifying the subdomains. So here you can see uh, the first step was subdomain enumeration, and I'm using a tool subdominer. So it's going to take some time. So I will continue this video once it finish the scanning of the subdomains. Uh, so our subdomain is finished and it give us these many URLs. It's also stored into a file. So I want to show you that different tools it run. Here you can see that the sub finder is run. Uh, sub list is also run. It is configured properly. Mine is not configured properly, but uh, Amas is also run. And uh, they are then they sorted out and then HTTP X is also run to find the live URLs. So let me show you where it is. It will make a folder as well as with a date. We will go into that folder and we will see that all of the URLs are stored, whether they are live here or not. Uh, in the old.txt here is seen and all of the live URLs are stored into cat all live so 22 are there cat all live so these are the URLs which are live onto the blanket site cool after finding all of the uh, subdomains we have to find the live URLs so here the first second step is already completed by the subdomain because is also identify the live domains and we have to identify the uh, url so what we are going to do we are going to cat the old live and we are going to give it to the go plus so it will take some time because it's going to add each subdomain and uh, as well it's going to collect all of the urls related to that subdomain so let's get back when it finished the scanning here you can see that like, the go plus has finished it scanning and we are going to check all of the urls Let's check how many URLs are there. There are around 8, 9, 5, 39 URLs are there. And what we have to do after finding all of the URLs, the thing we have to do is to replace the parameter equals to any parameter which have uh, some uh, 
value we have to replace it with the burp collaborator url and for that we need to go and get our burp collaborator ready so where is my burp collaborator here is my burp collaborator uh, so let me clear this uh, clear the history so what we are going to do uh, we will go here on the burp collaborator and copy the to clipboard we will click it only once and it will get uh, copy to our dashboard uh, to copy to our clipboard so let's go and uh, let me clear few things so what we are going to do we are going to do cat all urls and we are going to grab this grab equals to we are grab all the urls which have equals to in it and we will replace it with replse with our burp collaborator url we will provide the http from our side and then we are going to store it into ssrf.txt it's going to take very less time but still okay it took very very less time okay let's get ssrf.txt and check okay only 308 values are there which contain the equal to parameters fine so what we have to do now we are going to do get ssrf and we are going to run httpx with hyphen follow re redirect so let's press equals to although none of them is vulnerable i already checked them so but here i want to show you the methodology how we are going to perform it so let it get finished So let it take some time okay it's finished and let's go to the bar collaborator and poll now so after polling you can see that none of the events are occurring here so this means none of the url is vulnerable to ssrf here we will go back and i have something which is vulnerable to ssrf so i cannot show you that thing so i'm going to blur that thing out so i have another target and uh, i need to blur it because it's a private target and uh, i already reported it but it's not as of now disclosed so i cannot reveal the target so what we are going to do we are going with get all url.txt and again i'm grabbing all of the uh, url with the parameter with the anything which have equals to in between and replacing that parameter with the burp collaborator url you can see here and i'm going to store it into ssrf.txt file so it will going to take some time we will get back once the scan and the task will be performed okay now the ssrf contain all of the url that have parameter with the, this http url in it and we are going to perform the ssrf.txt http this let's see but collaborator is empty as of now you can see let's perform this so here you can see that uh, my url is here you can see uh, let's go and check if anything is revealed as of now nothing is revealed so let's get back to our cli okay still going on still going on i think there are lot of urls so it's keep on just uh, making a request to those urls so it will going to take some time let's poll now nope nothing find as of now okay so it's taking too much time we will get back once uh, the scanning will be done otherwise it will make the video really big so our command is finished and it have uh, tried to access all of the urls and here onto the burp you can see i got a request like two dns and one http request and here is the ip of the server i need to hide the ip of the server and i also got the link and i am hiding the starting part of the link here you can see that our uh as burp collaborator url is there so this is an ssr of vulnerability and uh, i am going to hide few starting here you can see that the starting point of the ip is two 
decimal point I am showing you apart from two point I am handing to keep the identity of the server hidden. So here you, you understand that the methodology for finding the SSR vulnerability with the help of the tools that I show you and you can automate that by adding all of the tools into a single line. I am going to provide a script onto that in the next week and you can check my GitHub location for that. So now how to identify whether it's a SSRF or an open redirect. So if I already mentioned is a source IP mentioning your IP or public IP, then it's a open redirect. If it's mentioning some other IP and you can also dig that IP. So it's going to be an SSRF and it's going to be a server IP. I hope guys you like this video and this information tutorial. So I want you to please like this video, subscribe to my channel and don't forget to share among your friends. Many more such videos are coming on the way. So bye bye.